thy greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a great joy and privilege once again, beloved and friends, to be here this night to minister the word of God. I trust the Lord that everyone is in good health and happiness regardless of our situation in the world. As I always say, beloved and friends, Jesus says, Lo, I am with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you even unto the end of this world. Isn't that awesome tonight? Isn't that great? Isn't that mighty? Isn't that majestic? That God promised to be with us in every situation, in every circumstances, in every trial, in every testing, in every storm, in every decision making. Yes, my friends, he says, a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but no evil shall befall thee and no plague shall come at thee. Let's give a big hand tonight. Sincerely from my heart uh, this night, I release a blessing upon your life, uh, and I pray that God will bless you physically, spiritually, socially, materially, financially, educationally, and every area in your life. Uh, and whatever you do, my friends, uh, it shall prosper. I release a blessing upon your homes, I release a blessing upon your marriage tonight, uh, I release a blessing upon your children. And I pray that God will bless your business, God will bless your finances, God will prosper your business, God will bless you on the job, and whatever you do, it shall prosper. God will bless you academically in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's give him a big hand tonight in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. My friends, I cover everyone under the precious blood of Jesus, and I build a hedge around your life tonight. Yes, for the blood of Jesus is so efficacious, and the blood of Jesus is so powerful. The blood of Jesus is a repellent that destroys every yoke, and every bondage, and every fetter, and every evil, and every work of darkness. Tonight, every spirit of witchcraft, albeit demonic forces, evil blights, generational curses, whether the first, second, or third, fourth generational curse, I break tonight, I break every chain, I break every barrier, I break every feather, I break every evil and every works of darkness that come against your life, whom the sun set free, is free indeed tonight, in Jesus' name, let's give a big hand tonight, you are free, my friends, you are free in the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus also said in his words, healing is the children's bread, and the first covenant, God made with man was the covenant of healing, for he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, I am healed, you are healed, we are healed, in Jesus' name, let's give him a big hand tonight, praise God, my friends, also he said in his words, the thief cometh, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but Christ comes, that you might have life, and life in abundance, tonight my friends, God wants you to have abundant life, but the devil wants to rob you of your true peace, and joy, and happiness, yes, tonight Father God, as I pray, that you dip me in the river of liquid fire of the Holy Spirit, and not mortal man of clay, and not my lips, and not my tongue, and not my voice, heal my body from every virus, every sickness, every germs, every disease, every deformities, every evil, and every work of darkness, as I minister your words, tonight your words will go forth with dunamis and power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that many will be healed, many will be saved, many will be blessed, many will be encouraged as we study the word tonight, I ask in the precious name of Jesus, tonight my friends, I will continue with, with the, the six angels, some of his trumpet part two, in the mighty name of Jesus at some, at some, some, at some coming day, other than John, mankind, my friends, uh, praise God, mankind has never seen such fierce looking enemies as these, yes, my friends, tonight, uh, I want to explain, John explained, uh, explained that this angelic Calvary successfully completed a mission, yes, they completed a mission, they were sent to do what they were supposed to do. Yes, 
my friends, and they completed the mission. This is what he wrote in Revelation chapter 9, verse 18 and 19 tells us, my friends, he wrote a third. He wrote a third and of mankind was killed. A third of mankind was killed by these three plagues of fire, fire, smoke, and sulfur. My God, hallelujah, that came out of their mouths. Yes, so that they complete the mission, accomplish a third of the population of the planet is killed, is killed by the plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of the bones of these horses. The power of the horses were in their mouth and in their tails, for the tails was like snakes. Now that's a little different, isn't it? Yes, my friends, it heads like lions, tails like snakes. Praise God tonight, having having the heads, having heads which have kept, which with which they inflict, inflict injury, injury, so they have a head like a lion, but their tails are like a snake, and the snake has a head, and it inflicts injury, eventually, my friends, those killed by this angelic army didn't die suddenly, no, they didn't die suddenly, they were first injured, and then died, a slow agonizing Death. Yes, that, that's of a snake, of a snake bite. So you see, death is the ultimate goal, my friends, of his judgment. They, but there is suffering prior to death. That life is of a snake bite. The response of those who survive this judgment. Yes, my friends, tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's take him out and discipline him. He says that's the way he goes to Lord. Yes, is that so tonight? He needs to be spanked. Yes, that's what we say. It's all right. Let me get him to it. Here we go tonight. So the response of those who survive, those who survive this judgment is heartbreaking. It's very much heartbreaking, my friends. You see, in spite of the devastation of the population of the earth, the survivors refuse to repent. They refuse to repent. I mean, all of this judgment, this fierce, deadly judgment is coming, and those people still refuse. They still refuse to repent. This is what John wrote in Revelation chapter 9, verse 20 and 21. He wrote the rest of mankind, the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues. That is two thirds. The two thirds are left and they see a third of the population die in his judgment. Still did not repent. They refused to repent of the work of their hands. Yes, my friends, they did not stop worshipping demons. Yes, they're still worshipping idols of gold, idols of silver, bronze, stone, and wood. Idol worshipper, idols that cannot see, nor hear, nor walk. Yes, nor did they repent. Did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, and their sexual immorality, or their thefts? They did not repent. I want to stop and notice something here tonight in the behavior of plant earth headed in on this direction my friends isn't there all kinds of idolatrous false religions yes they are just beginning to, to saturate the minds and the hearts and capture the attention of the present population of the order my friends and then what what border about border in the united states and Murder be another violent crime is an all time high, yes, across the world. And then, what about the magic art? What about people involved in mythica and witchcraft in sorcery? I mean, it's just an epidemic proportion. And then, what about sexual immorality in every imaginable kind? It seems, it seems that planet Earth is just saturated, saturated with that today. And what about thefts? And what about people disrespecting the rights of private ownership that other people have where they are just stealing everything that's not nailed down? Yes, my friends, it, it's everywhere. We are rapidly moving in that direction in spite of the calamity of his disjudgment. These people still didn't repent of that kind of behavior. The Christ rejecting pro, pro post-rapture population of water still refuse to repent and to repent means to change your mind it means to change your mind about who Jesus is initially tonight my friends and then change 
change your minds about how Jesus wants to deliver. What that it means to repent. It's change your mind that should result in a change of behavior. And they refuse to do that, my friends. Yes, instead tonight, they continue. They continue in their evil, evil ways. They continue in their evil ways. Now, let me tell you tonight, the thinking Bible thinking Bible students must wonder, my friends and beloved, why will people refuse to repent? Why will people refuse to repent and believe in Jesus in the midst of such horrible judgment upon the earth? Isn't that a valid question tonight? Why will people see a tour of the population wiped out and still refuse to stop and consider what's going on and then refuse, refuse to change their minds about what's happening in a world. I think Paul revealed to the state the answer and the, uh, the question when he wrote to the believers at Thessalonica, the words in Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9 to 12 tells us uh, Paul wrote this letter to the to this church in Thessalonica. Yes, my friends, and in the second letter he wrote to them, this is what he did, this is what he, he wrote, my friends, the coming of the lawless one, that's the one we call the Antichrist tonight, and that's the man who, that the world is going to turn to solve the problems during the tribulation period, about halfway through, he will get complete control of a global government. Yes, my friends, I'm sure you're aware, aware tonight that if you are as old as I am too, many of you are about that during this, 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 during this my lifetime, during your lifetime, we event, we want, we want from people who always talk, talk about the national governments. Yes, we hear about that, the responsibilities of nations, the sovereignty of nations, but no that we talk about more often than not in these days, my friends. Yes, the global, the global community, my friends, global currency is not so global economy. Yes, do you know that what's, what's preparing the way for a global government today, headed up by this man that we call the Antichrist? Yes, Paul here called him the lawless one. The lawless one, Paul called him, and look at what he says about this lawless one, the coming of the lawless one, the one coming to this uh, Antichrist who gets it uh, in complete power. About halfway through the tribulation period is according to the works of Satan, my friends and beloved. So where does he get his power? Where does he get uh, his motivation? Where does he get his genuine, uh, his genuine way that's uh, from Satan himself? in according to the work of Satan, my friends, with all I want to get this is important with all power, all power and science tonight, my friends, and lying wonders, lying wonders with all, all unrighteous deception, hallelujah, praise God among those who perish, my friends and beloved, so look at what this guy uses, he uses power, he uses his power and this is talking about that dynamic kind of power the power to do things like work miracles the power to do things like be able to supersede the laws of nature and do things that are unexplainable he used that kind of power and then science my friends and beloved he used these miraculous things that he has the power to do in order to try to convince people that he really is he really is a good guy yes he will deceive the world but actually my friends he's getting this power from the devil satan himself lying wonders and wonders is something that just causes people to be just amazed at the power that he's got to be able to do these things but look at what kind of wonders they are my friends lying lying and wonders who is the one in scripture who is always characterized as a liar of all liars is the devil himself. That's the devil, isn't it? So that this guy not only gets his power and his ability from the devil, but his character is like that of the devil. And says, and with all unrighteousness, with all unrighteousness, my friends and beloved, righteousness tonight, deception, deception. 
nation, the one do who has is a deceiver of the brothers and sisters. Yes, the one who always uses deception in our world in order to get people to follow him away from the truth. Yes, my friends in Jesus and ultimate condemn condemn them because they refuse to believe in Jesus. Rather they believe in him. They believe the lie of the devil. So this deception and look at the, this among those who perish, among those who perish, to perish mean tonight to die and go to hell as opposed to dying and go to heaven. Yes, my friends. And so he says there that the one that are, are that this antichrist, this lawless one is working on during the last three and a half years of the tribulation period are those who perish. Those who perish and there de is why they perish because they did not receive the love of the truth. But they might be saved, my friends. They wonder, they rather believe, uh, believe and live the truth as a result of the, the, that they perish. As a result of that they are not saved. And the word saved means rescue tonight. Yes, rescue from eternal death because Jesus has made it possible for you to receive the gift of eternal life. He says, my friends, here is that the people left here after the rapture. Yes, are people who are going to be subjected subjected to this this outreach out out and increased level of deception and lying wonders and malicious things. Yes, workers by the Antichrist through the power of the devil to deceive people so they will continue my friends not to believe not to believe and as a result of that my friends and beloved they perish they perish because as a result of that he says tonight and for this reason for this reason my friends and beloved because they had the opportunity and they could have done it they refuse to believe for this reason my friends the bible says god says go God will send them, send them strong, yes, strong delusion. God will send them strong delusion. Did you get that, my friends? God was, God was, if you get to the point that the rapture happens about halfway through the tribulation period, you still have to believe. But I don't believe, I believe the rapture will take place before the tribulation. Too bad because not only are you going to have the devil increasing, my friends his activities of deception at that time my friends but it says here that God himself will send them strong delusion strong delusion what is delusion tonight my friends and beloved it's when a believe when you believe in something that that isn't true when somebody is deluded it means they believe in something happening around them that really isn't happening yes my friends so so he says God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Yes, my friends and beloved, they, they all may be condemned. They all may be condemned, those who do not believe the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Do you know what, uh, what that means? That means there come, comes a time when people living on this planet Earth who have the every very opportunity to believe in Jesus Christ, but still refuse to believe in him the rapture comes when they have missed their opportunity my friends not only in the end is the devil going to turn up the heat but God is going to send them strong delusion and after the rapture they will not believe yes God says he is going to send them strong delusion so that they will believe the lie and be con condemned do you get that tonight my friends I don't explain to you why God does that because if God didn't do it the way if God didn't mark out the time and say I'm coming back to get my people at this point none of you are going to be saved after that none of you are going to believe in me after that if God didn't do that you know that falling human beings will do we will say I'm going to miss miss mess with Jesus stuff I'm going to Jesus and do what Jesus wants me to do until he comes and then after he comes then I'll get right I'll see a third of 
of this population died, then I see multitudes of other people snatched away and they're disappeared in the rapture and there's no scientific explanation to, to be able to explain where are all these people went that suddenly vanish and that's a tour of the population. Yes, get like uh, during this judgment, my friends, if God didn't fix it, yes, what, where that people will not believe after the rapture, my friends, then people before the rapture will not be motivated to believe. They'll still they say, I just wait until it happens and then I'll get it right. Listen to me tonight. If you are thinking like that, you ain't going to get it right after Jesus comes, my friends. You want the devil working on you and you got God sending strong delusion. You're going to behave the lie, believe the lie and be condemned and wind up in hell itself. You need to understand tonight, beloved and friends, family and relatives, oh, tonight, hallelujah, praise God, thank you, Jesus, and maybe tonight, maybe that's why John wrote in Revelation chapter 20 and chapter 20, verse 9, 9 and 20 tells us, maybe that's why he wrote the rest, the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues, hallelujah, yes, my friends did not, I says did not repent, they just didn't change their minds, yes, they did change their minds and believe, yes, they remain in their sins, I want to close by explaining this tonight, in order to escape the hideous suffering tonight, in of the, uh, the, the, the land slam judgment of mankind during the final three and a half years of the tribulation period or the full seven years in order to escape that and then in order to avoid the strong delusion yes my friends that will will send on the post rapture population of planet earth in order to escape those two things my friends and ultimately in order to escape being condemned yes being condemned and spending eternity in the lake of fire in the lake of fire you must believe tonight you must believe that jesus story you must believe the jesus story you got to believe the bible says about jesus yes my friends if you believe that story tonight you'll receive eternal life everlasting life and you will already be in heaven with jesus when earth is subjected to those horrible, horrible judgments that is coming very soon. Yes, Jesus explained the necessity of it like this, my friends, in John chapter 3, verse 16. This is my favorite verse tonight in the book. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Isn't that awesome tonight? What does that believes, my friends, yes, in him, we need to believe in him tonight, shall not perish, shall not perish, is that pretty clear tonight, you believe this Jesus story, you believe what the book says about Jesus, and what will happen, you will not perish, you will go to hell, my friends, you shall not perish, but have eternal life, yes, have eternal life, now I want to point out a couple of things, is here tonight it's not believe in him yes believe in him my friends hallelujah and that's what most people believe right believe in him and get baptized now need to be get baptized it's not to get it to heaven it's not what you want to be blessed while you still here and get some rewards when you get to heaven then he's talking about having eternal life that kind of life that lets you to live forever in heaven. He's saying how you do get to that believe in him, not believe in him, believe and get baptized. Yes, my friends, and, and go to church all the time, which is good thing to do. And but if you want to be blessed tonight and be good, are you listening to me tonight? Most people believe that they they are aware of that, that they can never know and they say and not because they never know how good God good enough. You ever struggle with that? How good is good enough? I ask people all the time, if you die today, will you know you go to heaven? They say, I hope so. You know why they say that? Because they think that they're going to heaven depends on how 
good they are. They, they never know if they're good enough. My friends, I've got to tell you something tonight. I can give you this. I want to help you with that. Okay, tonight, my friends, yes, and if you go to heaven, depends on how good you are. How good you are tonight. You and me, my friends, we, we are in big, big trouble tonight because our good works cannot send us there because we are not good enough. Yes, the Bible says tonight that there is no one who does good. Yes, who is good. Not even my friends. One of us tonight is good. So in human beings have we to be good to get to heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are going to be awfully lonely up there because in one of us going to go there you get that tonight. It's not about how good we are tonight it's about how good jesus christ is tonight yes my friends is good enough he that he could die on the cross of calvary descend into hell and purchase us with the gift of eternal life and offered it to us as a free gift tonight we get to heaven on his goodness and not on our own tonight did you get that my friends now tonight you want to be blessed while we're still here tonight yes you need to be good as you can be yes my friends you need to be trying to obey everything that he tells you to do my friends and beloved as you see the next thing that he tells us to do as you need to do it tonight the next thing you just do it the next thing you just do it my friends do it tonight then you will be blessed while you're here because you see this whole thing about eternal life is going to explain in a minute while the whole, whole thing about eternal life is a gift but blessings and rewards my friends they are not gifts tonight they have to be eternal they have to be earned eternal life is a gift you can't just earn that you just receive it but blessings and rewards my friends those are born those, those so by behavior matter yes if you want to be blessed here and reward when you get there my friends your best effort will get you there jesus took care of that already did you get that on the cross he died on the cross and bridged the gap between man and god to reconcile us back to himself he died in my place and your place so that we can have life and life eternal my friends the work has already finished the work has already finished jesus christ jesus christ has already paid the price it's a gift the salvation is a gift tonight yes i know many are sick tonight and those who are listening to me tonight when you are listening to me from the usa the uk canada or any part of the caribbean tonight my friends, tonight is your night for a miracle. Tonight is your night for healing. Tonight is your night for deliverance. Tonight is your night for salvation. Tonight is your night for victory. Tonight is your night that God will do a work in your life. Whether tonight you're sick or to death, and if the doctors have given you up, if you have cancer, you have AIDS, you have COVID, you have diabetes, a heart problem, liver problem, lungs problem, kidney problem, a blood issue, a blood dialysis problem what the case may be tonight if you're blind you're deaf you're dumb you're lame tonight is your night for a miracle if you're suffering with depression oppression frustration anxiety tonight is your night for a miracle if tonight you're suffering from a migraine headache arthritis pain in your joints if you have diabetes god will set your blood in heart if you have a mental sickness, yes, God will restore your sanity, sound mind, and a strong healthy body. What the case may be tonight, if you're demon possessed tonight, God will set you free from those demons. You say, man of God, what are you saying tonight? What I'm saying tonight, that Jesus Christ took 39 stripes upon his back for my sickness and your sickness and our sickness. Yes, my friends, yes, according to medical doctors, there are 39 major sicknesses and diseases that is plaguing mankind today in the world. I believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ took a stripe for those sicknesses and diseases that is plaguing mankind today. Let me go a bit further. Yes, what four man out of dust and bring into his nostrils. Yes, 
and form every part, every bone, every marrow, every joint, every organ, every tissue. So my friends tonight, it's no big deal. It's no big thing for God to give you a brand new organ or brand new tissue or bottle that cancer from your body or heal you from that migraine headache or set you free from that those demons tonight yes or heal any part of your body yes in the name of jesus i feel a tremendous anointing of god the holy spirit in this room tonight and i pray as i send for the anointing prepare to receive your miracle tonight many of you are sick unto death and the doctors have given you up tonight my friends the man of god is here this morning night to tell you that you will not die but you will live you will live to fulfill purpose and calling and destiny because god has not finished with you as yet and right now as i send for the anointing prepare to receive your healing prepare to receive your miracle in the mighty name of jesus right now in the name of jesus right now be healed in the name of jesus he said free by the power of the holy spirit i see many are healed many are saved many are delivered Many are set free from all manner of sicknesses and pain and disease and infirmities and evil and every work of darkness, my friends. It is the power of God. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. I see many are healed from all manner of sicknesses and pain and disease. Go back and check with the doctors. Write me, text me, call me, my friends, because of time. I do not have time to go to the sicknesses tonight, but I know many are healed from cancer, from AIDS, from COVID, from migraine headache, all manner of sicknesses. Yes, let's give the big hand for the healing Christ. Let's give the big hand. Jesus Christ is your healer. Yes, by his stripes, you are here tonight. Thank God for the miracle. Thank God for the healing. God bless you richly. I love you greatly. I love you very much. Do have a sweet night, Chris. I'll see you tomorrow by the grace of God in Jesus' precious and gracious and wonderful name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you richly in Jesus' name.